Hello, I'm Kathy Peterson, a volunteer with the Dayton Area Chamber of Commerce. You are watching Business Connection, a production of the Dayton Area Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber is committed to finding business solutions by collaborating with regional business leaders on key issues. Our guests today are Bureau of Workers' Compensation Administrator, Administrator Steve Buer and Chris Kirshner, Vice President, Public Policy and Economic Development with the Dayton Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you both for being here. We're going to be talking about some uh, pretty important issues, and we appreciate you taking the time for us. Now, the Dayton Chamber and the Dayton Miami Valley Safety Council are excited that many of our member businesses will receive a portion of the $1 billion dividend recently announced by the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation. Now, Administrator Buer, could you please elaborate on the decision to return these premium monies to over 210,000 Ohio businesses this year? Well, it's really a very exciting time. Anytime you get to give a billion dollars back to Ohio employers, uh, you make a few friends. And, and so it's really a good time at the Bureau. And, and really this opportunity comes out of an opportunity. Some might have called it a problem. Uh, but over the last really year, year and a half, we've seen something called the net assets of the Bureau, which are basically the liabilities over uh, the assets that we have grow with some great market returns. In fact, uh, we're as strong as the Bureau has ever been financially. Uh, we've done about 11.5% return over the last three years annualized. And so our, our net assets have grown to over $8 billion. And in talking with the governor, we wanted to do something that could really have a big impact, but also benefit all segments of the workers' comp field, uh, the employer, the injured worker, and ultimately reform our system. And, and the billion dollars is just one piece of that. Uh, here in the next three or four weeks, uh, in the late June, early July time frame, we'll begin to send checks out to over 210,000 employers, a billion dollars in total. It'll represent about 56% of the annual premium that each employer pays that will be coming back. So it's really a neat time. And again, it ought to have a big impact on the economy, not just to the businesses receiving the check, but you think about how a dollar multiplies in the economy, it'll really be a neat opportunity. And can you elaborate on that too? How does it fit in with Governor Kasich's uh, plan to, you know, grow jobs and, you know, expand the economy? Well, clearly the, the, the largest focus that the governor has every day, whether it's workers' comp or any of the other agencies, is how do we improve the economy of the state of Ohio? How do we make it so that jobs can grow here and, and families and businesses can choose to locate in Ohio, which, as we all know, is a great state? And so the governor has put together a three-part proposal that he thinks does that. The first part is what we just talked about, the billion-dollar back cash infusion over the next three, four weeks. The second part is a significant new investment in safety, in fact, tripling our safety uh, grants. And maybe we want to get into that a little bit later, but tripling our safety grants to $15 million that will be available to businesses. And what that means, if businesses take safety seriously, as many do, of course, uh, that means more moms and dads home safely every day after their job. And then the final piece is a little bit of system reform where we would convert from uh, our current retrospective to a prospective payment system in the next year. And ultimately, that will lead to another almost billion dollar forgiveness of premium for employers. So in total, this is a $2 billion plan the governor has put out there. Wow, impressive. Now, how many businesses here in the Dayton region will receive these rebates? Well, I'm not sure the total count because it, part of it is, is, you know, Montgomery County, Dayton, et cetera, sure. et cetera. I know that the, the portion for this part of the state, this region, is about $100 million. So it's a significant amount. In fact, it's a little over $100 million. So roughly 10% of the overall pie is coming back. And I ought to mention that, that of this billion, a significant amount, in fact, about $113 million, is coming back to local governments. Here we're talking schools, yeah. libraries, counties. Uh, cities, and that's going to come back in a real significant way for some of these communities. Oh, it's such a help.
Now, Chris, from the Chamber's perspective, what does it mean for the Chamber and its members? Sure. Thanks, Kathy. We're excited about it. I mean, this is a great opportunity for some of these businesses to get those premiums returned, a portion of those premiums returned, so they can reinvest in their operations, reinvest in safety in their workplace, and reinvest in growing their business in the Dayton area. And that's really what excites us. So, so we are very appreciative of Administrator Beer and Governor Kasich for making this such a priority and for taking a look at, at their financial picture and managing the financial operations of BWC so well that they're able to return some of these premiums to the employers that are paying them. Uh, you know, this is, uh, I've, uh, I've paid insurance uh, for, uh, since I could drive, uh, and uh, I've never had a premium returned to me. So this is certainly a unique opportunity, and we're thankful of the Bureau, uh, the, the Bureau of Workers' Compensation for doing. Uh, and it really is going to allow those businesses to reinvest uh, in their operations. The, I think the average return is about 50% of their annual premiums. That's significant for some employers. Uh, some employers pay a significant amount of change to uh, the Bureau of Workers' Compensation to get 50% of that returned in their annual premium. That's a healthy amount of money that can help grow their operations, help hire people, and invest in safety in their workplace. And, and that's exactly what we want to do Absolutely. for our businesses. Now, in addition to the $1 billion dividend, the recent plans announced by the BWC include provisions for enhanced workplace safety. You mentioned that a bit. Those grants and a switch to prospective billing system. Now, can you expand on these provisions and their potential impact on Ohio businesses? Absolutely. We, we think the package fits very nicely together and, and becomes a win-win-win. Employer workers and ultimately subsystem reform. So in addition to the billion dollar back, the dividend that will come out this summer to the employers, uh, we've also tripled our safety grants and this is from 5 million to 15 million that will be available both this year and next for employers and again it's public and private employers to come in and apply. It's a process we've had in place for a number of years but we hope by putting more dollars we'll get more interest especially at this time when the dividend dollars are coming back and they'll have some dollars available. Uh, the way the system works, they apply for various innovations they want to do in the workplace. Uh, we will be changing our current $2 of BWC money to $1 employer money to 3 to 1 during this period. So there will be more things that can be matched. And we're going to suspend what had been a lifetime cap for each business of $40,000 in innovation spending. Uh, and we're going to take that off and allow the bigger businesses to come in about every three years, mid-size about every five years. So we're going to loosen the requirements, we're going to allow it to be used for different types, more expansive types of safety, and, and we're really excited about that chance. And, and in fact, we're going to do some more communicating as the summer goes along so that people know it's out there and we'll be thinking more about safety going forward. Uh, the other piece you mentioned is equally as exciting but a little more long term. Uh, we're going to ask the General Assembly, and we believe that they're working on it now in the context of the state budget, to grant BWC the authority to convert from our current system, which is retrospective looking, meaning that the employers pay after they've already got the coverage, uh, sometimes 18 months after they've even got coverage, to a system that's like every other type of insurance, including private insurance that Chris mentioned, uh, where you'll sit down and you'll figure your bill and then you'll pay for the next six months going forward. Um, one reason this change has never been made is because it would have required the employer to pay the old and the new. And that's not something that would be very popular with business or, or practical even as they you know, manage their, their cash flow and those type of things. So what we will do at the time this converts, and it's likely to be late in 14, early in 15 mm -hmm. when we make the conversion and get our computers ready and educate how this will work, but the employers will sit down and they will receive an entire credit for a full six month premium, again a little over 900 million statewide, and then they'll figure out what their payroll is going to be in the next six months and make a payment going forward. And this will bring us into the world of all other insurance, public and private in the country. So we're real excited about the conversion and we think it helps meet the governor's goal of economic growth when you reform an agency and you make it simpler to interact with us as a business. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and uh, we're always looking for ways to make it easier for our businesses. I know safety is such a top priority for the Chamber. We have a lot of great programs where we engage businesses. You know, what do these grants mean? Yeah, these, these grants are, are extremely important for a lot of our businesses and our members of the Chamber, but also our members of the Dayton Miami Valley Safety Council. 
Uh, we manage the Dayton Miami Valley Safety Council, which has about 250 to 300 business members in it. It's one of the largest ones in the state of Ohio. Uh, and it's supported by the Bureau of Workers' Compensation. It's supported by the Chamber. It's a really a nice partnership between our two organizations. Uh, we're able to focus on workplace safety, uh, workplace um, meeting OSHA requirements, and ensuring that we have uh, a safe workplace for employees to be at uh, throughout the Dayton region. Well, these safety grants will go directly to some of those employers that are part of our safety council and really have made a commitment to safety in their workplace. And it allows them to take ideas that they have, innovative new opportunities for safe working environments, and actually make them a reality. And it's really a nice partnership, really a public-private partnership uh, that, that is administered through the BWC in which you can have private sector organizations partnering with the Bureau of Workers' Compensation on innovative safety opportunities, and then partnering with the Dayton Area Chamber of Commerce on making sure they have the appropriate workforce education and safety training. It's really a nice marriage. These grants are a big help. Increasing them to $15 million is a step in the right direction, and we hope to see that even grow further in the future. Absolutely, and you mentioned over 230 members mm -hmm. in it, and it reaches over uh, reaches an average of 170 business at each safety training event. I know that right. I see that calendar, and, and we have quite a few, and that, mm -hmm. that's very impressive. Now, I'm going to ask both of you, can you highlight some of the successes of the safety councils and the safety rebate program across the state? Well, Chris may be a little more on the ground and can speak company by company, but, but the Safety Council is something we believe in. As Chris mentioned, we fund it, but one of the things that we had heard, and specifically heard it from, from Chris and the folks here in Dayton, was that the dollars hadn't kept up with the levels of programming that they wanted to provide. And so last summer, we took and, and added 10% to the funding that BWC provides to the local councils and that was the first increase since 2006 and so we were excited to give them extra money so that they can continue to to make the bre the net broader in terms of who they're pulling into the programming um, one of the trends that's going on workers comp both in ohio and nationally is that the number of claims continue to fall in fact last year we took in only a hunt only a hundred and five thousand claims still a big number but if you go back just four or five years in the system we were taking in a hundred and fifty hundred and sixty thousand new claims on an annual basis and so although the workplace is changing and there are a number of reasons that come into that i think that safety is significant both employees and employers have begun to see the value and statistically we know that those businesses that have taken advantage of a safety grant will see their workers comp costs fall by about 66 percent in the out years so it's sort of a two to one three to one return when they invest a little time and money and so i think the safety councils support the safety grants support some of the wellness programming that we also have some opportunities for people to take advantage of all of it comes together to help employers control cost and control their risk, but also bring people home safely at the end of the workday. And that's what it's all about, really. Uh, Chris, can you talk about some of those success stories? Uh, ab absolutely. Uh, you know, as we said, we have hundreds of companies that are engaged in our safety council. Uh, and they're first and foremost, they're engaged because they want to have a safe working environment. That's their priority. They want employees to come to their, to their workplace safely, and they want them to leave safely and go home to their families. And that's really the focus of the Safety Council is to ensure that uh, the employers have the know-how and the education and the training to ensure that there's a safe working environment for the employees. Uh, well, because they are so dedicated, and as the administrator mentioned, uh, they see a direct reduction in their, uh, their BWC premiums because their rates are dropping. Um, there's also an opportunity for them to get a little extra rebate thanks to the, uh, thanks to the BWC. Uh, if somebody is part of the Safety Council incentive program, they can actually get up to 4% back on their BWC premiums. And that's in addition mm -hmm. uh, to other discounts that are offered. Uh, that's significant. That, that is certainly significant. And 2% of that 4% uh, is for participating in the Safety Council, for being up to speed on the cutting edge trends in safety and workplace environment and OSHA standards. Uh, the other 2% is for uh, reducing accidents and really a performance bonus, saying if you reduce your accidents or keep them the same as the previous year, uh, then you're eligible for that second 2%. Uh, and then even our folks that are in group rating are eligible for that 2%. Really a nice opportunity to reward folks for that, that are being committed to safety. Uh, and it just so happens the enrollment period for that is right now during this time between July 1st and July 30th. 
uh, is when folks can enroll for the upcoming fiscal year safety incentive program. Uh, it's, it's that tight window, so if folks want to sign up, if businesses aren't engaged in that and they want to save 4% on their annual safety premiums, they just need to enroll with the Dayton Area Chamber of Commerce and the Dayton Mine Valley Safety Council between July 1st and July 30th. We'll get them signed up for the program and they can start saving money right away. The w rewards are so great, so yeah. why wouldn't you? Absolutely. You know? you know, over the past several years, there's been a concerted effort by the uh, Bureau of Workers' Compensation to reform the group rating system in Ohio. Uh, as you know, the Dayton Chamber has uh, been actively engaged in this reform since we have over 700 businesses in our Dayton Chamber Group Rating Program. Since you took office, can you discuss your reform efforts and desired objectives? Well, as you probably know, and many of your, your viewers will know, the Group Rating Program has been in existence for several decades in Ohio, and it was it was primarily to take care of small businesses who, who struggled with getting their their risk rated appropriately, and, and so over the last few years, prior to to my administration coming into office and Governor Kasich coming in, uh, there had been some turbulence around this as as the maximum discount that was allowed to employers shrunk from at one time 95 percent to as low as 51 percent. And, and there was a lot of question about how viable this program was going to be going forward. And so one of the things that Governor Kasich and I felt was very important was how could we bring low rates to Ohio employers, of course, but stable rates, predictable rates. And so we met with our actuaries, we met with the business community and all the others who cared, and, and talked about where we could set that discount for group rating. And ultimately, we arrived at 53%, and that's a rate that we set the first year I was in office and now have maintained and hopefully will maintain for the foreseeable future as long as the performance is there and those type of things. But at the end of the day, we think that's something that, that's sustainable, and now businesses can plan accordingly. The other piece of rates that I think is worth mentioning is we continue to try to attack the issue of lowering base rates in Ohio. And for private sector employers, we did a, a minus 4% our first year. We held that steady the second year with a zero change. And then our board has just approved another 2.1% cut starting in July for the new uh, programming year. On the public sector side, we've done a minus 5% and a minus 5% again, and now local governments are paying the lowest rates in 30 years. So it's really a, a big initiative to try to get those costs down. And, and back on the private sector side, these rate changes have brought $224 million in rate savings to the employers of Ohio. That's how much less we're collecting. And you couple that with about $100 million in cost savings we've utilized internally by cutting our operation and streamlining. It's real significant, the dollars that now are employer pockets across the state. And Chris, what does this type of reform mean for the Chamber and its members? Sure. Th this reform is great news. Uh, of course, the Chamber would like to see you know, maximum discount for their members on, on, their, uh, on their BWC premiums. And we really feel like Administrator Bureau and Governor Kasich have made positive steps towards ensuring that they have the appropriate discounts necessary. Uh, the administrator is exactly right. Businesses need to have predictability. They need to have stability in their rates so they can budget and they can forecast appropriately. Maintain the rates at 53% and committing to keep them there uh, really is good news for our folks uh, because they're able to budget appropriately. They're able to look at where their business is going to go and have confidence and where their discount is going to be a year from now, two years from now. And, that, and that's important for businesses to have successful operations. Uh, I would also say the lowering of the base rates is something we have continued to advocate for. And we're really pleased that uh, Administrator Bureau has heard those comments from the business community and lowered the base rates by 6.1% for the business community. That, that's great news. We're glad to see it. And, uh, you know, minister, every time I see Administrator Bureau, I always put in a plug, let's keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> He's never afraid to nudge me. That's, that's right. right. Give you a big hug, pat you on the back, and then <laughs> say, hey. Exactly right. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Administrator Bureau, in many of your speeches across the state, you emphasize the importance of prevent, prevention and care in returning injured workers quickly and safely to their workplace. Now, as you know, a quick and healthy return to the workplace is essential for our employers to have a successful workforce. Can you highlight some of your specific priorities and programs that address the guiding principles of prevention and care and how the BWC proposes to support them? Well, thank you for your question, and, and you're absolutely right. Prevention and care is what we're about. 
Um, you know, BWC at the end of the day is just a large insurance provider. We, we take care of that risk in the workplace for Ohio employers. And, and if we were a standalone, we'd be in the top 10 largest workers' comp providers in all of North America. So we're very, very large. But if you boil the complexity of our operation down, it ultimately comes down to two things, prevention and care. And on the prevention side, we work every day around safety and the other things that we're talking about to make sure that less accidents are happening, that things are going on in the workplaces to prevent those injuries. Each one, the best claim, as I often say, that we have in the workers' comp system is the one that never happens because it's eliminated through better health and wellness programming. So we spend a lot of time on that side of the house, and we've talked about it here today. The other side is care. And once an injury happens, and injuries are going to happen in Ohio workplaces, how do we give that injured worker the best care possible? And, and it's my view you need to give it to them as quickly as possible. The best outcomes, the best recoveries are when a worker gets the treatment right away and the employer and the injured worker start working together toward a path toward recovery and a path toward what we call return to work. How do you bring the person back? In most cases, in the overwhelming majority of cases, that worker ultimately will be capable of coming back if he can maybe have some light duty to get him started on the path, maybe some modified duty, maybe looking at switching the job once he returns so there aren't maybe some of the stresses of lifting and twisting and those kind of things. So a lot can be done when everyone who's a partner in the system works together. And, and we've focused a lot of our efforts on that care piece to get our workers better care and get them back on their feet. Because that's where most workers want to be as well, back taking care of themselves and their families. What are some of the most common types of claims that, that you see? Well, interestingly enough, the, the number one injury type in Ohio, and this is true in other states as well, is people lifting other people. It's kind of unusual. You might think it would be trips and falls, and that's significant too, uh, but it's people lifting people. And, and you think about health care, and you think about nursing care, a lot of interacting and lifting. Uh, I, I believe that our most frequent injuries are the back, and shoulder type of things and that comes out of that people lifting people but also stresses and strains that take place in the workplace so those are the type of injuries that we're also putting some additional focus on I know uh, at my workplace we have a lot of training when it comes to safety and one of them is the heavy lifting and how to do it right you know Chris what are some of the programs that you know sure. are common yeah um, the Minister of Beer is exactly right. A lot, of the, a lot of the lifting and a lot of the back issues seem to be some of the most common programs. That's why at the Dayton Miami Valley Safety Council, we really committed to having program, programming that addresses those needs. Of course, we address other needs. You know, we'll have a, 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 a seminar about drugs in the workplace, about forklift operation, but we really have a strong focus on some of those most common injuries. How to properly do lifting, how to properly wear a back brace, how to ensure that your employees are going to be safe. Uh, and that's why the Safety Council exists, is to provide that education and training. Uh, it, it's a unique venue, uh, and because of the size of the Dayton Miami Valley Safety Council, we're able to attract national speakers, and we're able to have some of the most cutting edge programming so that our folks are mo that is just as up to speed as anybody else in the state is when it comes to safety and work workplace training. What are some of the programs coming up? Can you think of anything? Oh my gosh, uh, what isn't coming up? Um, well, f I, I, t I tell you what, I will make this real easy on you. Uh, in October, towards the end of October, we're having our annual safety conference. Yes. At that safety conference, we have about 20 different programs uh, that are breakout sessions that we have there that cover the gamut, that cover everything I mentioned. You know, construction operation, forklift operation, drugs in the workplace, lifting, meeting OSHA standards. It all gets wrapped up in that one event. So uh, if you're interested and uh, you want to get kind of a broad exposure to a lot of different, uh, a lot of different safety training, the Dayton Miami Valley Safety Council uh, Safety Conference in October is really the place to be. I hear it is just fantastic. I hear yeah. wonderful things about it. Now, how can um, our viewers learn more about you know what the chamber offers and the Safety Council? Sure. If they go to our website, uh, www.daytonchamber.org. They can find out information about both our group rating program that we have in which folks are able to get the 53% discount if they're eligible that Administrator Buer mentioned. And they can also find out about the Dayton Miami Valley Safety Council where they can sign up for the workplace training and safety 
uh, safety education that we have talked about. And they can also inquire about the 4% premium discount that they can get uh, by being part of the Safety Incentive Program, too. All right, a lot of great information. Now, where can folks find information about the Bureau of Workers' Compensation? Well, I, I, it's just as simple as typing BWC into your Google search, and up we come, and, <laughs> and away you go. We have an extensive web page. And in fact, we're, we're starting to even enhance that. And by late next year, we'll, we'll have a totally redesigned web page. It'll be even easier for employers uh, to navigate, and injured workers uh, for that matter. One of the important points I think Chris made and why the Safety Council can be so valuable is sharing of those innovations. You were looking for specific examples. Uh, I get the opportunity to go out to a lot of companies and see what they're doing around safety and, and workplace risk. And more and more of the companies, especially in manufacturing, are looking at every aspect of their job and bringing the research of the university systems and the college systems of Ohio into how do they eliminate that through computerization and robotics and all kinds of new innovations. And that's why the safety grant can partner with mm -hmm. the safety council and bring it into a very practical way. You know, you think about auto manufacturing and some of the heavy lifting that was done a generation ago you get a chance to tour a plant like a Honda or something today, there's hardly any lifting. They don't hardly lift a screwdriver anymore. It's all automated to think about those injuries that can occur and eliminate them right at the front. It truly is amazing, the technology that we see today. Mm -hmm. Anything else you both would like to add? I, I just I want to thank Administrator Beer and Governor Kasich for all they're doing. They've really gone above and beyond to try to make the BWC one of the most business-friendly agencies in the state of Ohio. We appreciate that commitment to not only business uh, business development, but to reducing regulations and reducing some of that premium burden that our folks have. So uh, we appreciate it. Uh, it's been a great administration to work with, and we look forward to continuing to work with them. And I appreciate. Chris's words and, and the relationship we have both with the Dayton Chamber and other chambers across the state and other business organizations, you know, there, there's some things going very well. I'm happy we're lowering rates. A billion dollars back is going to be very, very significant. Some system reforms, new safety innovations is all good. But I'll sit here today and, and certainly acknowledge there are still challenges in the system. We've got to do a better job of providing health care. We've got to do a better job of bringing all employers into the safety tent. And we're going to continue to work on those challenges. And so I hope people take advantage of some of our local resources here in the Dayton area through our, our local office or calling through the website or whatever they want to do. But bring the Bureau in, because very often there are answers. If you sit and sort of stew and get angry, uh, very often you aren't going to find a solution. But if you reach out, we have a lady named Erin Rosiello who works now in this area as a regional business development consultant. She's the shell answer gal for this area and can really bring some resources to bear. So we're hopeful that employers will reach out to us when those tough situations come and we can continue to have system improvement. Thank you so much. Steve Bureau with the Workers uh, Bureau of Workers' Compensation and Chris Kirshner with the Dayton Area Chamber of Commerce. Can't thank you both enough for taking the time to uh, spend with us. Thank you. I'm Thanks, Kathy Kevin. Peterson. You've been watching Business Connection. Stay tuned now for a message from the Dayton Area Chamber of Commerce. For years, Ohio employers were burdened by the cost of workers' compensation insurance. Years ago, many of us called it one of the silent killers of jobs in Ohio because of its high cost as compared to other surrounding states, making us less competitive in attracting and retaining businesses and jobs. Little by little changes were made that have shown positive improvements in the mission of this Ohio agency. Lowering cost, improved service, focus on safety training, and rebates to employers from excess reserves have all reduced employers' annual costs of this mandatory program. Ohio's workers' compensation program is still one of the few state-run monopolies in the country, a difficult, if not near impossible, program to now privatize after all these years. But we are showing more increased focus on lowering the costs and improving the ROI employer's way when expanding employment in our state. There is no silver bullet to making Ohio the most employer-friendly state in the union, but reforming programs like this and others go a long way to improving Ohio's competitiveness against others, something we all must do to attract jobs. I've been paying a lot of attention to the BWC for over 20 years and consider the steps being made by its leadership as definitely headed in the right direction. There are still other things we can do to improve this program and its products, 
but we have pro-business leaders in place who are willing to listen and make changes that will lessen this burden on our Ohio employers and help make Ohio the business-friendly state we all want and need for our futures.